And welcome to an exciting episode of The Energy That Surrounds Us. Today's episode I am bringing to you guys is a little bit different than we're used to, but there's an exciting reason behind why I'm doing tonight's show that I haven't shared with anyone yet. But before I get to that, let me say hello to my co-host, Michelle. Hey, everyone. So tonight's episode, I'm sure a lot of you are recognizing my guest because I have been on his show twice. And so it is my privilege and my honor to bring Rob Khalil onto the show. Welcome. Welcome to the show, Rob. Thank you, guys. Uh, good. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me well on everything? Yes. We, we can hear you. Oh, okay, good, good. I'm, glad, I'm excited to be here. It should be a fun show. Yeah, this is awesome. I love your intro, man. That was really cool. I, I really Thank liked you. that a lot. That was really that was a really good intro. Thank you. I What I did was I sent pictures to my cousin in Georgia, and I said, can you make me an intro video? And he put it together and surprised me with what it came out to look like. Yeah, that's that's really cool. It's almost like a deal, but it's like a. It was like it was. It looked like it was professionally done. I I like that a lot. That was cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so when did you guys that. start? Um, how long have you? Yeah. So, do you guys investigate uh, together, or are you guys part of a paranormal team? No, he and I aren't. I'm independent now. I used to be with Hood Paranormal, but um. No, nope. I was on oh, okay. Michael's show. Of, wow, it's been a while now. Year, year and a half ago, maybe. And then again. So that's how that happened. She was a guest turned co-host. That's interesting. <laughs> yes, it's an adventure. That's cool. Definitely. So, Rob, I'm curious because a lot of people at, um, know you as the typical skeptic podcast. What got you started in that? What what was the moment where you said, I got to do this, and you sat down and figured it all out? Well, I, I've told this before, but it, I mean, your audience hasn't heard it yet, so it's it's actually really interesting. I, um, I grew up listening to Art Bell, the great Art Bell. If you can see, I have a picture of him behind me. I was always a huge Art Bell fan. Like So this has gone back to... Um, 98 99 2000 2001 because i'm 43 so i always like loved the paranormal i always had an interest in the paranormal and i i always loved the energy that art bell brought to the radio i i still don't think anybody is matched like what he was able to do as far as like you know like late night talk radio i mean coast to coast still goes on today and i i like george nori and george knapp and all those guys but i still think art bell was the best to ever do it and when I would listen to Art Bell, I would always be um, so intrigued at the guests that he would have on. So I guess that kind of planted the seed. Um, what, what was interesting, though, is, we're, again, we're going back to 2001. This is when the Internet was just beginning, right? So, like, you would have to literally, like, to listen to Coast to Coast, it would be on AM radio here. So you would have to, like, tune in the dial with your radio. Like, you know, like, you would have to, like, flip the switch up and down to like get the exact channel that it was on. Cause it wasn't on the internet then, or it might've been, but like, remember like 2001, the internet was, you know, just like kind of coming out. So um, I remember riding around late at night, listening to art bell. A lot of times me and my friends, we would go smoke a joint and then we would um, end up at the waffle house and we'd be listening to art bell on the way there. And then we would sit there and talk about all the topics that art would, kind of talk about on his show and then what happened was i kind of got away from it you know life happens and you 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 know i said but i've always been into like the paranormal and horror movies but then in 2016 i had like a reawakening um something happened i was i was researching history topics uh, of all things i was uh i was looking into you know like different kinds of like history topics and uh i came across the story of the anunnaki like and it wasn't just the Anunnaki. It was a, a really powerful video by Matt LaCroix. It was called The Battle of the Eagle and the Serpent, which is 
it's I still watch it to this day. It was that, you know, um, and uh, I remember I emailed him that day and I was like, what is this Anunnaki stuff? I was like, this is amazing. Like, I was like, I have to know more, you know, and then from that that point on that um, that sent me down a rabbit hole and I started investigating every conspiracy and every rabbit hole known to man. So uh, and then when the pandemic hit in 2020, I, um, I had already been making videos on the Anunnaki on my YouTube channel. So I decided to start interviewing people. I was, I, I think I, you know, I started off just, just like how you guys are starting off, you know, like, or just like other people. And I never thought it would grow into what it grew into today, you know, but I, I love it. I, I wouldn't do anything else in the world. And I, I love like sitting there and talking to guests and talking about these topics that, um, that stimulate the mind and, keep us and i you know what's interesting is like the more i research the paranormal and the more i research the more questions i have you know it's it's uh, I, I, I don't know if i'll ever find complete answers but that's kind of what got me into it. sorry that was a long answer <laughs> oh that's perfectly fine and good answer yeah and i have to say i listened to art bell as well and so i know exactly how you feel and he he was an inspiration yeah, I thought I still think like he was the best to do it. Yeah. Um, do you remember the, the the famous Area 51 caller supposedly where that guy called in and he was flying over Area 51 and he gets supposedly gets shot down? I, I don't know if that was fake or real. I always wonder about that. I'm not sure. Maybe one of our uh, people in the chat room may know more about that, but it's been a while since I've heard about that one. And so. I, um, yeah, it's hard to say because it's like, why would you lie about that? But at the same time, it's like, well, it is like a kind of like a 15 seconds of fame moment. So yeah. it's hard to say, but I I'm curious. So I did a presentation on Saturday or Back, sorry, on Sunday, getting my days crossed. And somebody asked me a question that I was like surprised by, and I think is a good one for you as well. Is on your show, do you have your guests come to you and ask to be on, or do you go and find them? It's a little bit of everything. I even have like, I mean, since I've been doing this for four years now, I even have like agents that send me interviews so i i i kind of hunt down people to be on i have people that email me or dm me and ask me to come on and i i don't usually turn too many people down like unless they're like you know i mean i i don't know like i, I don't i like to let, let everybody have a voice you know what i mean like i i don't i mean i'm not letting just anybody on the show it has to be on the paranormal or something esoteric or something spiritual or you know, but um, I don't like I one thing about me is that I'm non-biased, like a lot of uh, this problems that we're having in the UFO community right now. And I can speak on this is um, people are taken aside or they they some like. So, for example, someone gets big on the Internet and I'm not going to mention any names. And then people start to follow that person. And then someone else gets big on the Internet and someone starts to follow that person. And they both happen to be in the UFO community. And then people take sides. So then like these people that take sides want me to cater to one side or the other, which I refuse to do. I, I want to have all aspects of the phenomenon so we can, uh, because I feel like everybody has a piece to the puzzle, right? So I feel like everybody has something to bring to the table because at the end of the day, we don't have a lot of evidence in the paranormal or ufology, you know, um, so, which, so I feel like, again, everybody has a piece to the puzzle so i like to get everybody's opinion and i don't i don't like to get into like the ufo community beefs but but that's kind of what happens sorry that's another long-winded answer but i i like to uh i i get guests from all different kinds of ways you know no that's great because that that's something that like michelle's getting ready to start a show in january so it's good to know for anyone who's out there who's looking to do a podcast to go, you know, am I supposed to hunt these people down or are they going to come to me? So it's good to 
have that answer well, out one, there. One, and- I think I think. I think you and I have someone who's a uh, does a similar thing. You know Michelle, she's on your show, Michelle um Freed. She's yeah. a uh, she's like a she's like a literary agent. She uh she sends me interviews. I'm sure she sends you people too. And like she uh you know, so she's like one of the people for example that kind of um you know, but I have like a like a handful of people like her that kind of send me interviews from time to time and then so I like that because then that takes a lot of work. But still, at the end of the day, I'm doing this all by myself. I, I do all the interviews. I, I, I research all, for all the guests. I, you know, I conduct every interview. I upload to multiple platforms, and then I find every guest. So it's 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 a lot of work. I feel I always tell people it's a 24 hour a day job that doesn't pay a lot. I mean, you get a little bit of internet credibility, but I mean, it's it's still a lot of work. You know, <laughs> I'm sure I, I you know. Feel- yeah, I feel for you because I only do two um, disclosure episodes and then Tuesday nights, so like four or five, so like six a month, maybe seven. And I think you were telling me you do one almost every day. And so it's I, do, like, I, well, I do. I did two today. I did two yesterday. I do. I Sometimes I do multiple shows a day. Today, this is the fourth show I did. I did two of my own, which were live, and then I did Forbidden Knowledge News, and now I'm doing your show. So, I mean, because I do it full time, you know, so I, I like to get myself out there. I, <laughs> I know it's you... crazy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just in awe that you are able to, like you said, as much time that goes into a show that you're doing multiple a day. I I struggle to do two a day. (laughs) Yeah. It's uh, once you get the hang of it though, and you get, yeah, you know, I think I I could probably do most interviews without having to do the research, but I still do the research because I like to, I I feel like it's showing respect to the guests. Like I like to be prepared for whatever they're going to bring to the table. And then I like to ask intelligent, thoughtful questions that can provoke conversation. So I like to, you know, be prepared, but I could probably do without it. I could, because I've done so many now I'm on my, on YouTube, I'm on my 927th episode. And then, you know, I think on audio, I'm like half the size. I think I have like 400 audio episodes out, which, you know, like if you get your audio going, by the way, the audio is like, it pays so much better than YouTube. It's, it's, it's insane. Like for some reason, I don't know why, but like if you get if you get your audio shows on Spreaker and you can get a good following, you can make really good money um, doing audio shows. That's a tip for anybody out there looking to do podcasting. Like <laughs> audio is pays way better than YouTube or you know it's it's crazy. I don't know. I'll have to look at Spreaker because I'm. I don't know that one. I'm on Spotify with one of the channels that I'm on and. <laughs> One's on Rumble now, which I took your advice on doing that one. So, yeah, I'll have to look into Spreaker and see about how easy that is or and how you affordable can, the good that thing is. Of, and, and what do you – it's like 20 bucks a month, and then you can still broadcast your spot, show to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, so you'll still be on Spotify. You just – your RSS feed goes to Spreaker. So like your, your RSS feed, they control your RSS feed, but you can distribute it out to other places and then they have other features too. And they'll monetize you right away, you know? Oh, wow. So it's like, oh. you know. I may have to look at that for season two. Cause like you're saying, you know, doing, you're on your not over 900th episode. I, I fell, I believe in June, in December, after I do the last show, I'll be at like 94 for the year. And so it's like almost hit the 100 mark, but didn't quite make it. Well, you might you might still, you know, if you get if you get motivated, maybe you could bang a couple out and get it to 100 by the end of the year. You know, you never know. Yeah, I don't know if that'll be happening this year, but I think next year will be pretty good. Yeah, next year yeah. will be definitely hitting over 100 for the year because there's some changes I'll be making along the way to some of the shows and that's another thing that I'm curious about with your show is do you break it down per year like a season or and change it up every year a little bit or 
Are you one of those that says, you know what, this is working? I'm not going to mess with the seasons. I'm not going to mess with making any changes. Just let it go. Well, I basically said that I started naming them on Spreaker as a season. So like this would be the fourth season because this is the fourth year. So, yeah, like, um, well, it, it's it's weird. If you count like 2020 as a year, I did it 2020, 21, 22, and 23. So, yeah, it's like four years. But it's like three, but four years almost. So it's like, yeah, I, I don't know how you, you would look at that. Maybe three years, you know, something like that. Three, three to four, three and a half years, something like that. Yeah. But uh, um, I, I did 10 episodes this year for the disclosure, and I'm counting that as one season. So yeah. I'm the type of, if it was done this year, that's a season. <laughs> Speaking of disclosure, David Grush was on Joe Rogan today, which I thought was like really interesting. That dude's really interesting to me for some reason. I, I don't know what he is. I'm, I don't know if he's a psyop, if he's uh, the real deal. I mean, he uh, he's got government clearance. He filed a whistleblower complaint. Um, he has all the accolades to back up what he says. He says we have recovered craft and alien bodies. I want to believe him, but I don't like to trust the government either. Right. So like if the government's telling me that aliens are real and UFOs are real, my first reaction is to go the other way. But at the same time, the believer in me wants to start believing that like, well, maybe this guy's being legit. Maybe he's real. He's backed up by Jeremy or George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell. Um, you know, they're, they're in with it. And, uh, um, they've also brought out some really good information. So it's hard to say, you know, I know there's some shows out there right now that are kind of, um, putting brush down, like, um, true seekers is a, is a big one. He's like real skeptical. He, I mean, he's way more skeptical than me and he thinks crush is like, um, a fake. But my question is, well, why would the government go so far is to fake about lying about whether they have recovered, ufos and stuff like that you know but also at the same time on the split on the flip side of that who's given him permission to speak because for 70 years since roswell the government hasn't wanted us to speak about this at all like they've put people down they've ridiculed people they've um that i think some people have been killed if you look at like carla turner the abduction researcher the alien abduction researcher carla turner and also the alien abduction re researcher john mack i feel like they've both been murdered in the name of ufology and now that's a little bit conspiratorial but uh, again that's i tend to gravitate towards that um and there's a little bit of backing to that but so there's a lot to unpack there but that's kind of the way i feel about what's going on right now yeah so the way I would look at it is, what did the government say? Like, you know, have they mentioned anything that hasn't already been said? In which case, then I might take interest, you know, of going, well, what new information are they sharing? Or is it just like smokescreen? Like, a lot of people, and I'm sure you probably thought maybe along the same lines, like the disclosure in the Senate. All they really said when I talked to a lot of people is like, yeah, we really have heard zero new information off of this, you know, disclosure. Unless, of course, you know, you've never, you know, heard anybody, then you might be like, oh my God, this is new. But for people like you and I who have been, interviewing people it was like yeah there was nothing new and so that's where i'm like yeah this was a smoke screen they were just appeasing us so to speak and so to answer your question about you know when the government says something that's what i do is so i look to see have they really said anything new or are they just reiterating what all the quote conspiracy theorists are saying in which case they you know really aren't disclosing 
Well, that's what's interesting about the whole thing is the government really hasn't said anything. They haven't they haven't remarked on Grush's claims. Like so, Grush filed a whistleblower complaint. So he he went he went to the government and filed a whistleblower complaint. So he's saying he's a whistleblower now, and he says he's coming forward with this evidence that the government isn't telling people that we have recovered alien bodies and recovered craft. Which yeah, you're right. We already knew, but like he also has the accolades to back it up. So which this is what makes it so interesting. He's a uh, I can't remember what exactly he did. He worked. He did something. He was really high up in the government, you know, and uh, somebody in the chat could probably say. But but, but uh, that's what makes it interesting. And the government isn't saying yes or no. They're not saying anything to it. They know nope, they had, there's been no official statement that, except the UAP hearings where they had Grush. They had Ryan Graves, who was a pilot. And then they had Com- Commander David Fravor who is also a pilot and they came forward with their evidence. Um, so I think it's compelling to say the least, but I don't know if it's really getting us anywhere. I think w- where the, 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 the real answers are is with people that are the experiencers, you know, like people like in the, they're in the chat, like Christy and Priscilla. Um, like I know Priscilla has craft in her backyard every day up there in Canada. Um, she shows me her videos every day. I know Christy. I know, is. Wow. Christy's uh, yeah, in touch with, uh, yeah, Christy's in touch with, uh, like she's in the, both in the programs. That's where the, the disclosure is going to come from, you know? So yeah, that's yeah. what I think. Yeah. Um, Flix love is asking if I have cats be- and no, what the sound was is I actually have two backdrops and I moved one behind the backdrop I'm using now. And it just fell. I don't know why it fell. There's no reason it should have fell. But that's what you all just witnessed. So apologies for that. And Joanne Stewart is saying, I think them playing with AI tech, they realized it opened Pandora's box. I would have to agree with that. I don't think they really understood when they started messing with the AI what they were getting into. Do you? Who? Who's messing with AI? Uh, the deep state and I think the White Hats. There, I, I've been reading up on the black goo that they found in South America. That they're they're finding there's AI involved in it. Oh yeah, that's 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 for real. I think that's real. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, it's so hard when we say the deep state. Is it the Kazarian mafia? Is it the Vatican? Is it the Jesuits? Is it you know? Is it the Democrats? Is it all the above? You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know. And then when we're talking about AI, what are we talking about? Because I have guests that come on my show that think that AI is already installed in us, like that, like. They, that they're running a program like with AI that's already installed in us. And like, say, for example, like the EBS, the emergency broadcast system was a way that activated that AI. And if you noticed ever since that emergency broadcast system, people have been really kind of ornery. A lot of people have been kind of off kilter, which I'm not saying it was because of that. It could have been something with the planetary alignments as well. It could, you know, I'm not sure, but it, I think it, you know, it might have had something to do with it, but I'm not sure if there's AI already in us. I don't want to get anybody freaked out, but I think she's right to a certain degree. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Are we losing you, Michelle? No, I'm just listening to you guys. <laughs> I, I was just noticing you're being a little quiet. So I was like making sure we weren't ignoring you. No, I was just listening. I was going to answer and then you change topics to a dog. So, or a cat. So I was just. Oh, you can answer. I was just explaining the sound of what fell behind me. No, I was just going to say that I I agree with a little bit of both of what you say about the, what they're telling us about the UFOs and things like that. I think they're only going to let us know what they absolutely believe that the majority of people believe and that's all they're going to give us. The rest is just feelers to see what we know, because if we feel safe to talk about it, then we're going to start divulging and divulging and divulging. And I think it's a fishing expedition. It could be. That's a good idea. That's a good that's a good point. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you don't know what your bully's scared of, you poke around till you figure it out. So, I mean, they're going to tell us this little bit. Oh, and then Mexico, you know, saying, hey, 
this is what we've got. And then with all of us starting to put with the internet, we're able to put together Egypt and the Mayans and, you know, the Grand Canyon. And we're able to put all these things together, all these, these air balloons that we've been told our whole time are, you know, weather balloons. And we're wondering how weather balloons can go straight across, vanish, come back, go parallel, you know, and then, and then go in airplane areas. So they're just kind of uh, testing the water and all of us can come out because we're not, you know, theorists or conspiracy kind of stuff as much in the shadows as we used to be. Now we can get out on these platforms and say how we've always been scared, kind of like witches and, you know, people like me, you know, they're out there and now we can say what we want, but they're going to be watching. I mean, there's are a you reason an experiencer, Michelle? Huh? Are you an experiencer as well? You'd have to explain that. It's, uh, like a, like a, are you? Are you an abductee or a contactee? I'm not sure. There's certain things that are awkward that I don't know if it's got to do with paranormal things or if it has to do with, I don't know yet. I don't know. There's peculiar things throughout my whole life. Uh, well, what, what's interesting are, is like, I think entities can kind of mask as other things, right? So it's like, yeah. we don't know what we're dealing with. It's, right. it's hard to say. I mean, I've woken up pretty much every day of my life with a new bruise, but I'm tumbling. I'm always doing stuff, but it's odd bruises. Sometimes it'll be hand bruises. Like I've been grabbed when I'm single. And if somebody grabbed me like that, we'd have an issue. So, you know, it's not happening, but I'll come up with marks. I can see underneath the tattoos and, you know, I'll wake up the cat's scared and jumping off the bed and I've bounced kind of on the bed as if I've been dropped, you know, What's going on? Am I teleporting? Am I being taken? What's, what is that? You know, why, you know, even matrix glitches are starting to kind of come into play. I've always thought they were, you know, I've just that, you know, clumsy or that, you know, scatterbrained that I forgot that I put that there, but then I'll end up with two sets of keys some days where I only have one set of key. And then the next day I'll only have one set of key again. So Everything is connected. We're just able now to use these phones and these machinery to actually start putting everything together like a puzzle. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm there right. might be somebody in the chat room that might be able to answer if you have or haven't. We got some pretty intuitive people in there. Yeah. Um. So Don Rogers is asking, if is this live again? Yes, we are live. And Flix Love says, if we are the disclosure, then what did we do so far with the info we got with from the higher dimensions? And as far as I know, we're playing a chess game right now. And so that that's about my understanding of the disclosure and how it's going to come. Um, Flix will your, always ask intricate questions. She's from my Discord group. She's amazing. She's a nice person. She's but she's like very, she's very schooled at this stuff. She's like um, she's like a hardcore, you know. She she really knows her stuff. I mean, I I don't know. I I mean, I just I feel like I, I think she might be right in a way, but and at the same time, it's like there there's two different there's two different ball games of what's going on here you have like the nuts and bolts ufo people who are talking about like the ufo disclosure and they feel like but then there's like the more esoteric spiritual contact e side and what we're doing right now is we're trying to blend the two and it's it's kind of hard you know yeah, a lot of growing pains in that plus with people mm -hmm. like me who are always living in fear up until we get to a certain age where our kids are grown and we just don't care anymore we could give it you know, rats ask what anybody thinks about it. Now we're coming out and we're still learning. We've just thought all these peculiar things throughout our lives were just us being peculiar or just crazy. And now we're like, no, all this time, these were puzzle pieces we didn't understand. So yeah. now we're piecing them together and we're getting within communities that we can help piece things together. So, you know, it's just a learning experience. So before I get to Flix's comment, Priscilla has some answers for you, Michelle. Okay. She says, wow, I get all. And then she says, this that Michelle is saying, and it says, I feel she said is the same as I go through and a lot of us. So. Oh, yeah, I believe there's a lot of us. It's like 
as I get out in the community and I talk to people and people reach out to me privately to do readings and things like that, they have so many questions that are so, you know, relevant. And I, I, the amount of people, especially women that I've came across that are just medicated, they're just thrown pills at us instead of having an open mind and, and actually, you know, working through things like, you know, my whole life tested for everything under the sun. And it's always like, nope, it's normal. Nope, it's normal. Well, you know what? There's a reason. If I'm not anemic, then why am I bruising? You know, if I'm if I'm this or I'm that, you know, maybe the fibromyalgia isn't that we're we're sore and we have an overactive nervous system, this big bowl they've thrown us all in. What if actually I mean, I mean, we're in pain because we've been somewhere while we're sleeping? Michelle, I can tell you, I had an entity in my room, like in this podcast studio here, uh-huh. and Priscilla knows about it. She she helped me clear it. But what happened was, okay, so I I was uh, I, I this was weird, and and I, okay, so I uh, did a show with this lady. Her name was Liz Cross. She's a psychic. You guys can go back and watch the one show. I can't remember which one it is. I I, would, I can get you guys the link or whatever, but um. So what happened during the show is she said she saw a dark mass behind me at one point. And I was mm-hmm. like, and then I thought I saw it out of the corner of my eye, but I wasn't sure. And then other people, when they watched the show, they said they thought they saw something as well. Well, then after that, what started happening was at night, I started feeling like I was being like, I know this is going to sound hilarious, right? But it, this is funny at first. So I felt like I was being massaged. Like when I would lay down. <laughs> I felt I felt like someone was like massaging me. I was like, "What the hell is this?" I was like, "This is like shiatsu." I was like, "But it was like nobody right was, I'm just nobody saying. nobody was there." Yeah. So 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 then like, but then it started getting more aggressive. Like then I started getting like touched more, and it started freaking me out. Where I would jump up out of my bed and I'd be like, "Stop!" And then it would just stop. And then um and then what happened was. Uh, after that. So uh, my ex-girlfriend, I told my ex-girlfriend about it. She was a little bit concerned, but then we let it go. Then I started waking up and I had bruises on me and scratches and it started getting worse. And then my ex-girlfriend came over. She was real witchy in a way. And she came over and she burned, burned some sage and she did some other stuff and it seemed to clear it out. Well, then it came back recently. It was recent. And I was talking to what's Priscilla in the chat and she did something where she did some hypnot, 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 it was like a, like a hypnosis thing where she came in and she actually, I think she cleared the entity out of here. I don't know what she did, but she was able to do something like, um, you know, and uh, I haven't had issues since, but it, it was a real issue. I really felt like I had an entity in here, you know, for a long time, you know, it was, it was strange. Like, and I'm not an experiencer. I don't, I, I as far as I've had people tell me I'm in the secret space program, but I don't know for sure. So I don't say I am, I, I've never, I don't have any memories or anything like that. And I, I'm not an abductee as far as I know. So I, I don't, I won't lie. But one thing I can say is that I really did have an entity in here. Like I, I really, right. I don't know. So maybe you have an entity. I have a lot of everything. It's it's a rarity that there's not something. Anybody who says my house is a haunted, oh, this place is a haunted. Everything is haunted. Everything is haunted. It's just what kind of thing is it going on? You know, are they going to be speaking? Is it an attachment? Everything. It's You can't go anywhere. Just some are quiet. How can you not? How can they not be everywhere? You know, they're, they're with you. They're with me. They're with Michael. They're everywhere. They just may not always have reason to talk to us. Just the right person in the right moment, you know, can do a, a do a lot. Priscilla's got a lot of, a lot of stuff going on there. What'd yeah. she say, Michael? Oh, uh, she said she shoved it in a portal and for Rob and Don Rogers is saying, if you want to talk about controlled astral travel premises, he says he'd be happy to in Discord. Okay, I don't. He's he's asking you guys to join my Discord group. They're a part of these. Yeah. They're all a part of my Discord group. Like, if you guys want to join, you can. It's it's free. It's it's just a group where we we get together. We t- I have a Discord group and a Telegram group for my podcast. There's only like a hundred people in each one. It's not a lot. Like it, it's just like the people main main people who watch my show a lot and like we talk about everything in there. We 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 get into like Flix loves in there. She's in the, the Dawn's in there. Priscilla. Yeah. Um, I, they, they, they all, um, 
we all get like a lot of we have sometimes we have watch parties where we watch movies at night and we'll talk about the paranormal. You guys are more than welcome. You seem like you would enjoy it. Like, you know, um, I don't know. I, I it's, it's open invitation. I enjoy it. But Michael, I, I was, enjoy conversation that's open minded and just kind of goes anywhere it's going to go. That's kind of what I want to do with my show. I just want to start out one way and wherever it goes, it goes because it's all connected. So it doesn't matter what one show is particularly about. It matters about what kind of content you're going to get. You just just jump down that rabbit hole. and Let's get more information out there and let's hear what everybody has to say. And, you know, you may not even know that that's what it is. Like, I would have never thought this stuff was anything to do with being abducted. And then things from my past start clicking. People that have been put in my path for years that I didn't even click until now I'm getting all of these memories back the closer to my birthday again, more and more memories. Every birthday is, it's like a, another door opening and it's, it's crazy. I'd love to be, love to talk to all of you guys. And somebody said something about spirits or something. I can see beings all around her. Is Priscilla talking about me? Am I her? Yeah. She, she, she thinks she can see you and it's he's around you. I'd like to know what that's about. She can send me a message afterwards and, and uh, I'd like to know about that. I rarely get readings. People usually can't do anything about me. It's always me doing everything else about mm -hmm. everyone else. But we need you guys to have your show. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to say we need you guys to have your shows. I think the more people that have shows and they're spreading this information is better. That's why I want to help everybody I can. Like, you know, I – uh I, a lot of some people are like real dickheads in the podcast space. They don't want to uh, do interviews or they don't want to help people. I'm not that way. I want to help all, everybody because I feel like um, everybody has, again, I think everybody has a piece of the puzzle. And uh, I think we're all, we all met each other for a reason. We may all know each other from past lives. We may all have a connection to Egypt. We may all have a connection to Atlantis. We may all, you know, and, and we're all here for this time on earth because it, as far as I know, this is the most important time on earth. I sort of told Chris from Forbidden Knowledge News, I said, I'm so happy to be alive right now. I think this is the most exciting time in earth's history because of the awakening that's going on. And like, um, not just the awakening, but all the information that's coming out and all every, everything that people are sharing. And, you know, if you did this 20 years ago, you could be almost like burned at the stake. You know, people yeah. were ridiculed oh, yeah. and tabooed yeah. for this stuff. You know, I don't know. Yeah, and we would have created mass hysteria kind of thing in their head, you know. It's kind of like free for madness going on here, except for ghosts and everything else. <laughs> and to piggyback on what you were saying, Robert, was I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know, it's really great when you find friends in the community who know people who you may not know. And I count you as one of those. And I remember I came to you and said, hey, do you know anyone on this topic? And you're like, yeah, go ask this person. Go ask this person. And I thought that was like really cool that you did that and i was like you know and i appreciated that so much because yeah i mean it's one thing when you have someone who does the shows and has all these connections and you're starting out to go i don't know who to ask i don't know who like you were saying you know is gonna fill your show with crap and gonna bring your show down or who's going to you know share the right information and so i i was like really appreciative of you helping me out with that oh yeah i feel like we all got to help each other you know that's uh that's like the one thing that i think you know like that is missing in the world is kindness and and empathy Absolutely. and and people are real greedy and i don't know it's not it's not that's not the way i want to be you know no. i, I want to i don't know i agree i yeah. think and, and I also think that, you know, it's a time of just being used for everyone. And, you know, now we're kind of the new commodity because now that we can go out and, and go and give readings and things openly, I think it's kind of we have to find the platform where we can be helpful and not be using like users. And I'm seeing a lot of things going on with that lately, like, um, you know, go out in town and you let someone know what you're doing. And then all of a sudden you're their trick pony every time they see you in town. 
you know, let's get it to where instead of being the trick pony, you're actually having a conversation with these people and, and teaching them instead of being their pet. So, yeah. 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 I know a little tie right there, but it gets. No, it gets that's old. okay. Do you, do you have experiences with entities, Michael? I think we talked about it on my show, but like, did you, do you, do you have a lot of experience? I know you've had a lot of paranormal experiences. I know you've had a really interesting, um, you know, background. I, from what I remember right there. Yeah. Um, as far as with entities, I have had experience since I was two with entities. I've been around them all my life. And, when I talk about entities, I include shadow beings in those category of entities because I'm not sure if shadow beings are just glimmers of someone's past, you know, reliving like a spirit or know. if they're an actual being. And so I don't want to discount them as, you know, because we have a shadow realm. So to me, it seems like, well, if we have a shadow realm, there's people that probably live in that realm. And so, yeah, I, I'm always careful when it comes to talking about the shadow beings that I, I try. I don't know what they are, but at the same time, I don't discount what they possibly could be. Castaneda a called them in, inorganic beings. So yeah. they're they're like beings, but they're not or organic. I love Castaneda. You know, he was yeah. a great, great uh but uh but what I was gonna say is that I heard that actually on an Art Bell show he did with um this Native American elder named Thunderstrikes back in the day about the shadow people. And he also said uh, what's interesting about the shadow people is he said the reason why people are seeing more of the shadow people is because our reality is starting to speed up. And that's what it seems like to me. Remember Art Bell said there was the quickening, which I thought was really interesting. He thought that like, our, and it seems like the days and the weeks just go flying by. So I think there was something to that. Like, and maybe our, also our, um, our use of technology, like why, like, you know, our overuse of technology, uh, looking at a screen could bring, um, uh, somehow maybe manifest shadow beings. I know one time I, uh, I was having, I was trying to have out of body experiences. I was trying to provoke them. I was using uh, Robert Monroe's Hemisync binaural beats. And I, I was really trying to like go out of body. I was doing every, cause I felt like if I would go out, if I was, if I went out of body, then that would prove that there was an afterlife to me because, you know, I hear all these stories of people having near death experiences, but at the end of the day, they're just stories. So I wanted to know for myself, like if there was an afterlife and I figured, well, I'm going to have an out of body experience. So I tried for days and days and days and i got to this state where you you you'll be in a deep meditation and your body will start to vibrate then you'll start to hear like a whooshing sound in your head then all of a sudden you'll kind of pop out of your body that happened to me once i was looking at myself down from the ceiling and it was so strange but then after that so i got scared i heard i popped back into my body and then i tried to have another one and then as i was going out into my mind's eye i was i was having the um I was having the, the out of body experience. I started seeing two shadow people in my mind's eye and it freaked me out because I started thinking, what are they going to try to do? Like body snatch me or something. So I was like, uh, I backed away from it. And then I kind of got into a relationship and then I, I stopped trying it, but I'd like to start, start trying to do it again. You know, I don't know. Like, um, cause I realized I don't think those entities can hurt us. I'm, I'm not sure though. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about it. Yeah, it's all based on intention, and so you, if you believe they can, then they can. If you believe they can't, well, that depends on how strong that belief is, but I, I don't want to tell you, you know, it's all rosy on the other side and out of body, is because there are some dangers out there, but if you don't go looking for it, I don't think they're going to come, you know, find you. Yeah, I have That's a different Yeah, <laughs> Completely. I think mine is totally different. I see two types of black kind of style. I see one that's almost like humanesque that has a totally different vibration than anything else on earth. And then I see the dark shadowies that are at the corner of your eye or they're in an investigation that kind of seem to always go between things through doorways you know across it and stuff and 
I think those are just scouts. They're just there checking things out. But I don't think you have to like, you can't hurt me and therefore it can't hurt you because I think that it depends on what type of thing they are, their strength, you know, are they a fear eater or do they just have the strength already? Do they, what do they pull from? Do they pull from batteries? Do they pull from light? Do they pull from the moon? Do they pull from the sun? You know, do they pull from rocks? You know, what are they getting their power from? So I, I don't, I don't think you're just like, go away. And they always, they go away or, or you say, yes, they can hurt me. Oh, scratch me, scratch me. And then they scratch you. I don't. Maybe they're pulling from, they're pulling energy from the construct. Like if we're in some kind of simulated reality, they could be pulling like, and we're all energy. They could be pulling from your energy. You know how they say that beings like loosh off our energy. They could be literally pulling off your energy to exist. Like they say they feed off our energy. Maybe they're existing off our energy. I never thought of that till now. I just thought it might be. There are carnivores versus vegetarians. Like, are the people who pull off, are they the carnivores? And the people that pull from nature, are they the vegetarians? You know, it's kind of that way. If if vibration is energy, which in my understanding, a vibration is an energy. It's, to me, it's energy. Then they could suck off of anything, just depending on what type they are. Because to me, everything has a vibration. I feel a vibration off of almost everything on earth. It's, it's overwhelming to an extent. Well, no, absolutely. So we just have to figure out what they're eating. Like, what is their source? Even if it is extraterrestrials, what is their source? Everything has to have an energy source. We have food, we have the sun, we have the moon. We have all these things. We have to identify what it is. And I think they can hurt us if they so choose, no matter what it is. They just have to have the right formula. And that's interesting. I think. We you also have to be advised that it may not be the shadow beans, but there are beans out there that are known as um, vampire suckers. Yeah, that's or that's- energy vampires, and they will find you, latch on, and just drain until you cut their cord and release them. But that's true, but that's a totally different. That's a totally different feeling. Like uh, I call them sap suckers. I don't know why, just because they feels like there's sap in your energy, but that's kind of a whole different feeling. Everything is so individual as far as that, but yet they're all connected. It's just an amazing puzzle. It's just amazing. And we're so lucky to be able to start putting the pieces together. I know. I just feel like the more, the more I, the more people I have on my show, the more questions I have. I, I, I can't mm-hmm. get like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to formulate too hard of an opinion on anything because I'm just not sure, you know. So I, I leave it open. That's why I, I always say I'm better at interviewing people than I am being interviewed because what I basically do in my podcast is I just like what the, put the information out there, and if it resonates with the audience, then. You know, it does. But I do have some opinions on some stuff. You know, I'm, I'm really skeptical in my in my real life about like what I actually believe and what I don't believe. But at the same time, I'm really open minded as well. Like, I feel like you have to be because I feel like the world's much more mysterious than we were ever taught or anything we've ever thought of. It's more, it's like a big like. You know, like, like, for example, like Courtney Brown, I had him on my show. He says that, like, you can literally see UFOs up in the sky. Well, what's weird is I, I was just saying Priscilla has them in her backyard. But for the people that don't have them in her backyard, she, he, you know, Courtney Brown says you can get a Lumix GX6 camera. You film an infrared and then you slow down the shots and you'll see, like he says, it's like Star Wars up there. It, I don't know. He said, and we're, we're not seeing it because we have a, vi- a limited vis- uh, perception of vision where we have, we have right. like, we only see like 5% of the electromagnetic light spectrum. So right. what are we, and that this could tie into the paranormal too. Like, why are we not seeing these things? We're, and then the bigger question is, were we ever meant to see these things or were, was right. it, was it meant to be a mystery to us the whole time? And what, and then that goes even deeper than what's the whole point of life. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy right. <laughs> when you start thinking about it, you know, it's just a lot to take in. I don't know. Yeah. It's so interesting I, though, right? Yeah. yeah and I've crazy. seen them in the skies above. I've seen stuff in the skies with my naked eye 
And I think what it comes down to is I had a spiritual teacher when I was a teenager told my parents this analogy and they told me is so you take a room of say 30 people and you say okay when you walk out those doors there's going to be a ufo hovering in the parking lot 15 of those people believe in ufos or the possibility so they're going to go out there and they're going to say wow I can't believe I'm actually seeing this UFO. That is really cool. Ten of those people in the room are like, UFOs don't exist. There's no other life in the universe. They're going to go outside, and they're going to say, I don't see what y'all are talking about. Nothing's out there. Y'all are just nuts. And the five people that are on the fence, they may or may not. It depends on their mind. But our mind filters is what she was teaching us. So if you have a filter that says, I can't see UFOs in the sky without equipment, then you're going to need equipment. Or if you say, you know, I don't, I don't think I believe in UFOs, you're probably not going to see a UFO then. So it's all around what your intention and your filter of what you believe is okay That's a do, really you good think point. Don't, do you think they don't see it or are they rationalized away because i believe they see it and they rationalize or explain it away instantly because they don't want to know what they're seeing i think they see it anyway i think they just automatically ah. switch it to oh that was just a shadow from the tree outside or oh that must have been oh the coffee pot's you know glitching that's why it's turning on or you know, do you think that they just are in denial? You know, some of it may be that, but some of it I think is purely is no, because I have been in the room with people and I've said, I just saw an apparition walk by and I could see like half the room was like, where, you know, like really interested and the other half are like, no. And it's like, I knew it's because those people don't believe apparitions are real. So they would, they just won't see it because, so let me put it to you this way, Michelle. If you walk into a field and someone picks up a four leaf clover and you're like, that's really cool. That's a lot of luck. You know, that's a good luck charm. I can never find those. You're going to walk through that field and you'll never see them because your mind says you there's no such thing as good luck. So you're never going to see the four leaf clover, which is the symbol of luck. I don't know. I, I think if you take that same person and you say, oh, my gosh, you just stepped on one. It was underneath your foot and you get them to look down at their footsteps. They'll see one. You've just got to tell them, oh, did you see it? And then let them open their eyes to see. I think it's, I still, I have to, we have different opinions on that. I still think they see it and then they throw it out. I think I it's a good point, but I, th I was going to say, I think like what Michael said, uh, what you guys are both saying is like how, how much of uh, our mind affects our reality. And I can tell you, I think a good amount, like I, I, exactly. I, 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 I think we were able to manifest things in this reality. I've been able to do it somewhat. Um, you know, um, I, obviously I'm not a millionaire, so, you know, I can't, you know, do that much, but I mean, like, I don't think we're meant to have all the money in the world. And I don't even think I would want to be rich anyway. I've talked about okay. this in past shows, like, but like I, when I need to manifest something, I can do it, you know, when, when mm -hmm. I, I don't know, like, um, oh, yeah. I, I just feel like I've, I've sent people subliminals and affirmations and, um, recently the ones I use to help, like, um, cause I want everybody to start manifesting their reality. Cause I think but the, something about the, the, the veil is thinning or something like that, where right. it's, we're, we're more able to do this. Like if you would have asked me to try to manifest something 10 years ago, I wouldn't have knew what you were talking about. And then also, I don't think we would have been able to do it. There's something about like the veil thinning that is enabling people to be able to use the power of their mind more, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Do you, I, do you think one of the veils is the ozone? I've I don't wondered know. That's a good idea. when all of this started happening and they're talking about the ozone, the ozone, the ozone, don't break the ozone. Do you think it's kind of like a, in a smoker's house where the, 
you know, the light bulbs get all teeny. Like, is that what's kind of the same ozone matrixy kind of thing? Like as this ozone thins, is that actually just the veil breaking? Yeah. I'm not Don sure. made a good point. Don said the 95 5 principle that said 95% of your subconscious mind is con- your mind is controlled by the subconscious. Only 5% is the conscious mind, which is huge. Like, yeah. you know, that's that's why when I go to bed at night, I put my affirmations on because when that's they say that you can, you, you, when you go into that theta state, is when you yeah. want good affirmations hitting you. Okay. And what's weird is that this is why I felt like I've had entity attacks because sometimes I went to sleep without that and like, I'll feel like something's trying to put negative thoughts in my head, like an yep. entity or something. Like, and I have to like, I'll wake up and I'll be like, what the fuck was that? Cause I know it's <laughs> not my thought, you know what right. I mean? But it's something oh. like, it's weird. I don't know what yeah. that is. Yeah. yeah but- Daily dialogue. I think a lot of us have that where we're yeah. just like, no, it's not you. It's not you. That's someone else's opinion. This is stay focused with you. Yeah. I yeah. have to look that up, Don. I'm, I'm not sure I'm fully familiar with that one. But I am familiar with Bruce Lipton, so I probably have scanned it. But Flix is saying, not seen, but they all feel that gut feeling, that eerie feeling that some entity must be there or energy changed. Ask about that feeling. That right. That is true. There is, you, I know some people do get a sense of something's there. I, I like to call mm-hmm. it a spidey sense. Mm-hmm. We just that gut. It's our gut. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The firmament. Yeah, that's been crazy. I've been watching that most of the day. Yeah. And then she says, clearing and protecting our energy sphere is so important. Mm -hmm. And Flick says, "Mm, ozone, similar to the veil, also micro... Tomorrow in our own bodies. Oh, macro. Macro. Mm-hmm. Micro, macro in our own bodies between the solar plexus and the heart, and another between the third eye and the crown chakra. Maybe two veils or layers. Yep. I can see mm-hmm. that. Priscilla says, yes, 5% conscious mind, and the rest is running programs. <laughs> Definitely. It's probably why our batteries run down so fast in our bodies. Because we're just so busy always having that back dialect going. Yeah. So you got, are both you guys in America? Or you guys both celebrate Thanksgiving or whatever? Yeah, we're only like an hour and a half apart. Mm-hmm. I'm in Pittsburgh. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's uh oh yeah I can tell now I heard you say that I can tell you have a Texas accent that's oh I probably have I a Pittsburgh accent I haven't been talking you know? much, but I have one I can I can dumb it down like just make it a little more even kill when I try real hard and I'm quiet and only say a few words but if I actually mm-hmm. talk then it kinda- so are, you are you from say- Texas as well Michael I'm actually from the north but I've been in Texas since 1984 so. My accent's kind of gotten smushed. It's a hybrid. Where, where are you from in the north? Illinois. Oh, so that's like cool. I can say Minnesota. Yeah. Got some yeah. soda. <laughs> then my accent comes out. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people like uh, don't like want to celebrate the holidays, and the people that are spiritual, that are like some people from my Discord group, they don't even feel like celebrating Thanksgiving because they, I don't know, like that, that a lot of them don't celebrate Christmas or Easter. Or, I know, I, I don't really. I mean, I have to because I have family members that do, so I kind of get dragged into it. You know what I mean? But like, I don't know. I I know the best part for me about Thanksgiving will be the food. So I mean, yeah. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm gonna take the day off on Thanksgiving and and like and just like chill. You know, for one, you know, because I I have three more shows I have to do tomorrow. So I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I have one show tomorrow. <laughs> I have this yeah. show every Tuesday. That's all I do right now. But I I work privately with a lot of people. I go in and help corporations out when they're doing big mergers. I just sit in there and kind of give them a feel of what the other one's up to and. So, so I you're a mediator, of kind of quietly dressed like a secretary, being a humble mouse in the corner. 
listening. The first time I saw Mediators was on Wedding Crashers. What, I don't know if you guys remember that movie. Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn, they yeah. were mediators. I just, uh, I just had some buddies that were putting some big deals together and they said, Hey, can you just come sit in the boardroom and act like you're supposed to be there and tell us what you think? And so now I make, I make decent money doing that, going in and advising people Shit. on business. No. If someone offered me that i'd be like hell yeah you know yeah. i mean i love I doing what i do you know i love <laughs> doing podcasts and like finding out the truth and i do podcasting full time so you know but i mean like i i and i i, I want i want to leave a legacy behind like art bell did you know what i mean like i want like the way i like you know like i'll still listen to old art bell shows at night that's so much of a geek i am for it like i'll listen to old coast to coast in the middle of the night my ex-girlfriend used to get so pissed we would go to bed and she'd be like you're putting on art bell again and i'd be like yeah i would go to bed listening to it like because it was so like relaxing and like you know right. and what's interesting is i find people are saying a lot of the same stuff right now in the community is what they said on art bell back in the day it's like a lot of the ideas got started from there but i mean right. i'm not saying anybody's wrong or anything like that it's just kind of something that i picked up on i don't know yeah. And we actually have gone over the hour. I don't know if you have somewhere to be, Rob, because I know you're an hour ahead of us. I can go. I can hang out for like 10 or 15 more minutes if that's okay, okay. if you want me to. Yeah, that's fine. I just was trying to be respectful of the time. And Don't look at me. I'll go for hours. I don't ever pay attention to that thing. I'll probably get in more trouble for that because I'm just, I just want to go with it. I don't want to stop. I wasn't sure if it was like a two hour program or a one hour program. And I was like, but you know, so I, I, you know, but uh, I'm trying to think of what else we could talk about. We could uh, talk about, um, uh, I don't know. Do you guys have any other questions? I, I can answer whatever um, I can try to. Actually, I got one for you. That's kind of paranormal disclosure related is what, and I'm not asking favorite guests, so don't get me wrong. Uh -oh. But what show left the biggest impact on you that you did? Well, my favorite shows are the ones I do on the Anunnaki because I feel like that we have like a real historical tie to them. Like, you know, I, now I, there's a lot of esoteric beliefs. Like I'm actually doing a presentation here in Pittsburgh on December 3rd um, at the Panera bread in Mount Lebanon. I'll be, I'll be speaking in front of a UFO group here in Pittsburgh on the Anunnaki. It's like a two hour thing. I don't know how I'm going to go without vaping for two hours, but I'm going to have to find a way off to chew nicotine gum or something. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm doing it on the Anunnaki. I'm going to talk about the Anunnaki. That's like one of my favorite subjects to talk about. I feel like there's real historical evidence. Like when it gets into the little more esoteric stuff, I feel like it's like, eh, that's a little vague and we don't have answers, but I know that if you read the Sumerian clay tablets that you can find evidence of the Anunnaki. So I would say the, the best guests were Matt LaCroix, Paul Wallace, um, Michael Tellinger. Those were some of my favorite ones that I talked to about because they, they talk about that stuff, you know? Yeah, and I'm hoping to get Michael Tellinger on. I'm friends with him on Facebook, but I haven't approached him yet because I, I felt like I needed one season under my belt before approaching some people because I, I just – I, I feel like I know it's a bit risky to when you're in talking about certain subjects, you don't know what the host is about. So it's like, do you really want to take the chance that this person's going to be on your side or are they going to totally try and like make fun of you for everything? Cause I've had guests talk to me about that. And so I feel like having this first season under everyone, you know, when I approach them now, I'll be like, yeah, you can watch these shows. I've never done that. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah. What are you, I don't What's even know what you're talking I, about. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like throwing people under the bus or divulging things they don't want to talk about? What are you talking about? He's talking well, about like if you get a guest on and then they, and then you like kind of like refute what they're saying or like, you know, something like that, you know, like, right. like if you, if you like this, if you basically like if you diss your guest on the show, you know, yeah. like, you know, like then he's thinking, but like, I just think what it is is like, you know, like here's what happened with me when I was first starting out or I mean, you still have a, you have a season under your belt, so you're not just starting out, but like, 
but before I had a lot of people, some people didn't come on and then they came on later. So it's like, I just had to keep trying. Well, you just have to keep trying with some people. Some people are going to shut you down at first, but don't let that get you down. Just keep going and just keep trying and you'll, you'll get, you'll, you'll make it, you know, that's what I did. And, you know, and at Flix asked, did I speak to Michael Tundra? I said, yeah, I definitely did. It's in, it's in my shows, Flix. You can look at it. It's, it's a good show. He talked about that one small town initiative that he's doing where, um, He's uh, they, you know, they, they formed a community. They did one in Lebanon. They did one somewhere else where um, they none of the people work. They just help the community and they have businesses in the community and people work like three hours a week. I don't know how they do it. It's amazing. But like, yeah. it's interesting yeah. as hell. Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. he, he started that shortly after doing the calendar, wasn't it? Where he found the yeah, calendar. Yeah, calendar. Jones. Yeah, he he was doing the stone circles and Adam's calendar. That there's a lot of evidence with that stuff too. I believe those stone circles are really healing, and I'd love to go see those someday in in uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa. I believe that's where Anki really was. You know, like I believe that he really like the Anunnaki were there there in Mesopotamia. You know, which was like modern day Iraq, so South Africa. Right. Enlil was in Mesopotamia, and Enki was in Iraq. And then when you go to Egypt, Marduk was there, and Thoth was there. But then Thoth got exiled out of Egypt, and Thoth went to Mesoamerica, right. and started. That's where he was known as Quetzalcoatl or Kukulkan, and 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 that and there's evidence of that. And what's interesting also is when you look at those Olmec statues in in Mayan territory. So that it's like Mayan. It's Mayan architecture, but there's these Olmec statues out of nowhere, and they look African. It's like, wow. how did where did those come from? If we weren't all connected at one point, like I think we were much more connected. And I just think that we went through series and series of cataclysms over and over again, and we've forgotten our real history, you know. And I right. really truly believe that. Absolutely. I, I, I think the Tower of Babel was not one a one time incident. I think that's happened a lot. To where as soon as yeah. we start unifying, something comes in and splits us apart again. And then, I mean, you can look at even today's culture. I mean, look how schismed we are in a time when we really should be unifying. And everyone's worried about making new pronouns or, um, you know, going, well, I just don't like this person. So we're just not going to you know, benefit everybody because I don't like what this person said about that person. It's like, really? What, what? Yeah, I, I, that's one thing is like I'm trying to against politics, like because it, it separates people. I mean, I'm like more of an independent, but I lean more conservative in my values. But I still don't like politics because I feel like no politician has ever helped me. And I don't know, like, I mean, like, you know, there's there's a, some evidence that Trump might have been doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, it's all politics and it's all smoke and mirrors. You know, it's like right. we need like you said, Michael, we need to unite and we have more power than the politicians, because at the end of the day, they don't give a fuck about us. You know, we have to look out for each other because, you know, like I, I mean, here's what someone I think my dad told me this and this makes so much sense. Who do you have more in common with the the homeless guy on the street or the politician? You probably have more in common with the homeless guy on the street because the politician doesn't even know we exist, you know? Right. I don't know. Right. And the other thing, too, Rob, that's interesting is that there were movements to remove, like, Washington and our founding fathers, monuments and everything. And what was the biggest idea they had to teach us was – three percent to five percent of the population of the colonies overthrew an empire so you don't need the majority you just need a few and so yeah. they're, i think they're trying to destroy that spirit out of us yeah and that, that's what it looks like texas is going to become their own state or their own you know it seems like it you know we threaten that all the time that's yeah kind of but there's if Texas was to return to the nation that it was when we became a state before they carved us up, then we would be owning New Mexico, Arizona, Calif parts of California, 
and we would stress stretch up to Canada. And I know the U.S. ain't going to give us all our territory back. No. That they stole. <laughs> if, if Texas as a state emancipated away and became our own country, we import too many products. We, I mean, if you look at the numbers, we import too much. We're, we're cattle and some farm, but you have to have more than what we have. It's all great, and I'm sure we'd figure it out. But it's like saying to get rid of, you know, the majority of our workforce and send them back across the border. You know, we we have built our whole lives upon these structures. You know, we would have to do some major overhauls. We would have to bring companies back into Texas, boot some companies out of Texas. We would have to do a 20 year plan on this. We can't just say, like, screw all you other people. We're just going to do it ourselves. We have to think practical about it. You know, we've got, yeah. we've just got too much being imported. I mean, we don't grow right. our fruit here. We wouldn't have fruit. Maybe it's peaches, you know, pears, apples. But we, I don't know if not one orange grove or anything like that. We have to import things. And if we're going to one, one, our own, there's, there's going to be growing pains where nobody's wanting to import export with us. One of the biggest problems is that the whole country, the United States, imports too much from China, and then they export too many of the jobs overseas. So we're yeah. importing too much from overseas, and we're exporting too much to overseas. Yeah. We need to be more. It's so funny, like and like how they they. I'm not even going to say who, the 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 country's names and stuff because I don't want to get the video banned. But how they fund wars in other countries. Do you ever notice that how they'll give like oh, yeah. millions of dollars to another trillions of dollars to another country, yet some guys homeless on the street it's like yeah. no fucker like help the guy that's in our own country that can't live like you know what i mean like that's so messed up like why they go to because you know why those department of defense contractors make money off a of war you know what i mean oh, so they're on each other's pockets the, yeah war is the most lucrative profession there is yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. before we sign out I, I i'm curious rob your take on this theory that I have and we, we've been taught growing up society wise, civilization wise, we are more advanced now than we were say stone age and in ancient times. And I actually believe the truth is they were more intelligent and smarter in the ancient times. And we, have forgotten too much. I'm curious your opinion. Uh, I totally agree with that. I think you can see traces of it that they were like real spiritually advanced. And you can even see like there was like Greek inventors like Archimedes who invented that insane weapon. You know what I mean? And there was there's like you know there's like the Baghdad battery. I'm just thinking of stuff off the top of my head. I think they had high technology back in the day, but I think it was more spiritual. You know what I mean? I think it was it was less tech and more spiritual, but I still think that you know in Atlantis and stuff they had oh, you know yeah. high technology. You know, I I think we're being yeah. lied to about a lot of that stuff, like or, or they just don't know. But the, here's the problem with archaeology. This is another problem. Like the old archaeologists want to stick to their ways. They want to believe that the Earth's really six thousand years old, and that's all there is to it. They don't want to admit to you know people like Michael Cremo who has human bones from a million years ago you yes. know what i mean michael cremo from our forgotten history you know so it's like and, and these these old timers they don't want to like let go of their old ways because they feel like it would throw their whole career away you right. know what i mean but right. if we can embrace these ideas like it would it would help so much you know yeah yeah well, I mean, it's got to be intimidating for the for the ones who started out in this because they worked so hard with what they had. And now with all this technology and stuff that we have and more open minds, it's almost like we're exceeding instead of thinking of us as their children. And they've taught us and they want us to grow and they want us. They're treating us like rivals instead of their children, which we are their children. They made these stepping stones that we've comfortably walked across to put our own stepping stones down for the next people to walk on those stones to make their own stepping stones. And until people stop looking at everybody as a rival and start looking as your child, your student, your, you know, your person, you know, then it's, it's not going to get better. We're not their rivals. We're not telling them 
they're wrong. We're saying thank you for finding what you did for us so that we can grow on that and find more things. It's not a we don't want your information. We're grateful for it. That's how we are where we are. I agree. Right. In, I agree. In respect to the time, Rob, I know you said 10, 15 minutes. We've been gone a little bit over that. What, so what is coming up for you besides that one speaking event? Anything else coming up for you you want to promote? Um, no, I mean, you can just check out my podcast. It's uh, it's everywhere. I try to be real um, prolific with the way I, I have them on Rumble. I'm on Rockfin. I'm on all every audio platform like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and then – I always just tell people, if you're seeing this, uh, support the podcast because that's what I do. I'm a full-time podcaster. It's not good money. It's always up and down. Money comes and goes. And, oh, I have good merch. I have really cool merch. That's one thing I do want to promote. My merch is awesome. Check out my merch store. I'll send you a link if you want to put it in the description. If, if not, no sure. big deal. But, I mean, like, it's uh, it's really fun stuff. I collaborated with Jim Gerard on some stuff. We made some really cool T-shirts. I made some really cool hoodies. People like them a lot. Um and I made some pint glasses and coffee mugs and all kinds of stuff. Like I, I really take pride in my merch. Like I like it a lot. I don't know. Like I'm, 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 I'm I've never met someone. So uh, you're probably like, I've never met someone so proud of their merch, but I really am happy about it. I don't know. Like, no, I'm, I'm actually, to be honest, watching you to see how it goes to see about venturing into it. I've thought about it and then I backed away because you have to really be locked in on what your imagery is going to be. And so I, I'm curious to see how that goes for you. And if it's, you know, like, you know, like you're saying, you know, we don't make a lot, but if you're finding good sales from it, yeah, you know, maybe that is something to look into and take more seriously than just discounting and saying it. Nah, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I've found different ways to monetize myself, but it's still hard. It's like always like an up and down struggle. Like, you know, I would love to do some boots on the ground research. Like, I'd love to like go to places and investigate some UFOs and stuff like that. But like right now, it's tough. Like, I'm trying to just like I'm trying to leave a legacy behind, and at the same time, I'm trying to feed myself as well and pay my rent. So, okay. and it was never about that because always a about at the beginning was sharing the knowledge, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what I'm still about today. And, but uh, it's somewhere along the lines, I kind of got fed up with my matrix job and I was like, I cannot do this anymore because I was being belittled at jobs. Like people was, you know, I used to be a mortgage broker. I was making really good money. And then I had to take a couple bad jobs and I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. I was like, I will, I refuse to be like looked at as like a, like when I have so much more I could offer the world, you know? That's kind of where I was looking at it from it. All right. No, and I respect that. And I know your legacy will be a great one. And I have to say gratitude and appreciation for letting me be a part of it. Oh, you're, you're awesome, man. You're a great guest and you're, you're a great host. This was fun, man. Thank you so much for having me on. This was amazing. Yeah. I, and thank you. Nice meeting you, Michelle. This was awesome. Nice to meet you, Ralph. Yeah, so um, as I put on my YouTube channel today, a friend, um, Andy DeCodes, showed me how to do it. I have tagged your YouTube channel to on my channel in a comment in the community section. So you can find his channel there. It is in the description. I highly, highly recommend if you have even an inkling of any of the information that we talked about tonight or other topics go and check out typical skeptic podcast because like he said he's got almost a thousand shows you can find whatever you're looking for most likely he's got an episode on it and his episodes are really cool and really well done Oh, wow. That means a lot, Michael. Thank you. Cause that, that means a lot coming from you because you're like a paranormal like expert. So that, thank you. That really means a lot. Yeah. Don't make his I'm, head big. Don't not an expert, head. but <laughs> no. we, we don't have any paranormal experts. I got done saying that what, uh, at a speaking engagement on Sunday that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like to use the word expert because 
we're still all still learning in our field. Yes. Absolutely. But Absolutely. thank you for the compliment. All right, guys. Well, it was it was awesome, and I'll see you guys soon. And thank you so much. Yes, and Rob, thanks for thank being you. Here. All right, have a good night. You too. Good night. Good night. That was awesome. Good night, everyone. And, and let's see. Next week we will be having. Ooh, who are we having? Uh, I'm on the wrong page. I don't think I know yet. You. Have told me it. Mikael Clark from the Netherlands. So this will be a really fun and interesting episode next week. So don't want to miss out on that. And so from our show to your sh to everyone out there in the world, wherever you are, have a blessed night, blessed day, blessed afternoon, and keep doing your own research. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Okay, where's... The, there we go. You have just listened to the energy that surrounds us with your host, Michael Koff. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.